We are here to wash our robes in the blood of Christ so that we can participate in the glory of Christ. And so, please stand as we begin the celebration of Liturgy of the Word. So in order for us to receive the loving, merciful, compassionate God's grace, let's acknowledge our sins and pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have received my thoughts and your words, Give us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Gather the people, 
notify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is the God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled with God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time, I heard you. And on the day of salvation, 
I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. When you give alms, do not blow your trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not in your heart let men know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogue and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they can receive their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except your Father who is hidden. And your father who sees what is hidden will be paid. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I want to thank and welcome all of you to this celebration of the liturgy of the word and to receive ashes on our forehead. And we are here upon this day to begin the first day of Lent because we are sinners, we need mercy, we need grace. But the promise that the church reminds us about, over and beyond being a sinner, we are called to remind ourselves that we have a Redeemer and we have a redeeming grace ready and willing to save us. That's the whole purpose of gathering us and making sure that we receive ashes on our forehead. We all know about the beautiful gift of Eucharist, the heavenly food on earth for us to uh, receive, live this beautiful earthly life so that we may prepare to enter into heaven. I know for sure many cultures also have a deep uh, devotion and the tradition that teaches us that receiving ashes is something that one receives a sign of repentance and forgiveness so that we may enter into heaven. They ask the question, who doesn't want to go to heaven? Of course, everybody wants to go to heaven. But who wants to who wants to behave and to be disciplined? Not ready. Who wants to go to heaven? Everybody. Who wants to do the best thing that you want to go to heaven? Nobody. I ask the kids, who 
who wants to go to heaven? Everybody said yes, one kid did not do it. And I asked him, why? Why how you come? You are not you don't want to go to heaven? No, if I want to go to heaven now, I have to die. I'm not ready to die. <laughs> so you know, we are not we are of this time of length. For so many beautiful uh, good things that the Lord provides. One other thing I wanted to highlight is about relationship. All the scripture reading that we heard today talk about relationship. That's why the book of Joel, Prophet Joel is one of the small books in the Bible. He talks about harden not your heart. Offer your heart to the Lord. A humble, contrite heart, O Lord, you will not learn that word we sang today. And again, uh, uh, St. Paul reminds us about the beautiful gift of this season, reminding about passion, death, and resurrection of Christ, humbling ourselves so that we might be able to imitate Him, for He is our Savior and our Redeemer. Mother Teresa reminds us about this season. We all think about giving up something, but she's saying when you give up something, something think about those who are less fortunate, less privileged people, other like you know more, more than yourself. You know, you, you always think about I'm poor, I don't have this, I don't have this. But this is the time you are called to think about even less fortunate people than you, less privileged people than you, more poor, more you know, those kind of situations. So you have to reach out to them. Stop for them, pause for them, talk your life for them, and help them meet their needs. It could be prayer, it could be a time, it could be material, it could be, you know, uh, your spiritual, or your presence, whatever it is. She always reminds about a beautiful story that happened in her life. She was giving a big talk in one of the, you know, the cities, and after the talk she was walking out, and she happened to see a beggar, you know, sitting on the sidewalk and she's crying out, Mother, I want to talk to you. Mother, I want to talk to you. And everybody's kind of looking at the mother walked close to her and she kind of, you know, knelt to him and then bent to him and then talked to him. She said, Mother, I heard you talking about this time. You have to think about the less privileged, less fortunate people than you. I think there are more poor people than me. I'm a beggar. I beg for my life. This one I got for this day. And I think I can spend the night without this money. Take this and give it to most poorest people that you know. And she writes in her biography in a later, I have received so many awards, even Nobel Prize. That wasn't such a, that didn't give me so much joy. But this little man, this poor man, gave little money out of his begging, made me so happy. And I think this time of the year, you know, the Lord is calling us to have that inner joy within our heart. That's why go to your inner room. In order for us to go to inner room, and I wanted to, you know, remind you, I know your teachers told you, your parents told you, grandparents told you, godparents told you, what are you gonna give up for Lent? What are you gonna give up for Lent? I have a couple of things lined up for you. What do you need to give up for Lent? First thing, Give up complaining. Give up complaining and then imitate from Christ the attitude of gratitude. Letter to the Philippians, it says, chapter 2, do everything without complaining. First letter of Thessalonians says, give thanks to God in all circumstances. Number two, give up bitterness and learn to forgive. Book of the letter to Ephesians says, Get rid of bitterness and anger from your heart. And it says, Be kind, compassionate, forgive one another as Jesus forgave. The third one, give up worry. Worrying about everything. But this season, you are called to imitate how to trust God. Gospel of Matthew talks about it. Do not worry about life. Do not worry about your life. Because if you worry, you cannot even add an hour to your life. And Matthew also says what to do. Seek. Seek before. Seek before everything. The kingdom of God and the rest of the things will be given unto you. 
And the fourth one, give up discouragement. There's so much that, you know, in this time, we kind of fall into this. Give up discouragement, take up hope upon yourself. The Lord is kind to those who are hopeful. And the next one that you want to give up is anger. Oh boy, that's a hard one. Today, the Lord is calling you to give up anger and then take up patience. We all want patience, but we pray for patience. When it comes to matter of being patient, we lose. So this time of the year, we are called to give up anger, take up patience. And the last one, give up gossip. <laughs> and pray for self-control of your tongue. Psalm says, keep your tongue free from evil. Book of Proverbs talks about he who guards his mouth saves his life. We know about that. Let us pray this time that the Lord continue to pour out his mercy upon us and to us. Loving God, in thanksgiving, we pray for this time of grace, special time of healing and strength, a spiritual healing that you sent forth upon us. Bless all of us gathered here, all those who are attending service at home. May all of us come closer to you and give up anger, discouragement, that we might be able to be hopeful and loving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand let's profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of the Father, and for all the ages. God from God, I am the God, the God from true God, the God did not make, but substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for all salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit. Was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his body. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day and in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will die on him. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave him life. Proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord of life, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and the Son of Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord of God. Amen. As the Father embraced the prodigal Son upon his return, our Heavenly Father opens His arm to us when we return wholeheartedly to Him. So let us pray to our merciful Father. For the church leaders and parish priests who will perform the sacraments of reconciliation this Lenten season, may they welcome the faithful with open arms and reflect the merciful in the spirit of our Father in heaven, to all those seeking renewal in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For our local, state, and national leaders, may they develop laws and policies that provide those in our jails and prison systems the opportunity to fulfill, to fully rehabilitate, and live again as productive members of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for all of those who find themselves weighed down with the burden of sin and addiction, may they find renewal and new life in Christ with the knowledge that Jesus died for our sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who find themselves battling depression, anxiety, grief, or any mental anguish, may they learn more. When may they lean more into God's merciful arm and find the peace that surpasses all understanding 
that only he can provide. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For our St. Bernadette's community, that we may grow in understanding of the mercy of God this Lenten season and deepen our relationship with him through prayer, meditation, and study of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Silas and Mahala to pray for our personal needs. To our merciful God, who watches over us as we take this beautiful step to repent and believe in the gospel. May we always respond to the call of Christ and live every single day for the greater glory of God. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please keep standing. I'm going to do the blessing of the ashes. And so, as soon as we bless it, and you are welcome to receive. If you want to go back and then stay some time in prayer, you're welcome to do so, but you're welcome to exit as well. Dear sisters and brothers, let us humbly ask God our Father that He be pleased to bless with the abundance of His grace these ashes which we will be put on our heads in penitence. And so we pray. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance. Lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So the prayer that we are supposed to say is repent and believe in the gospel. Remember that you are dust unto dust, you shall return. Everybody respond, Amen. Amen. So you, sister and myself will be uh, giving you ashes upon your forehead. Because we are sprinkling, we are not applying because you know I might be touching it, you know, each of you, so we don't want to do that. So we're gonna sprinkle. So you don't have to humble if you could uh, I mean uh, bend low, but if you stay straight so it will be easy for us to sprinkle um, you know ashes on your forehead um, and then as you are going out one pray one out father three hail marys the lord be with you the almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit